This video is the fourth in the series on liver cancer. Liver is an organ that sits on the right side just below the rib cage. A normal liver has smooth outlines, but it can damage it can be damaged by viruses, alcohol, and fatty liver disease to turn it into a cirrhotic liver which has fibrosis and this predisposes to liver cancer. In this video we shall get a basic understanding of the treatments that are suitable for liver cancer. Before we get into that, we have to realize that liver cancer usually presents two serious problems. The first is the underlying liver disease, which in its own right can be life-threatening. And then the second is the liver cancer itself. Before any treatment can be suggested, it is really important to assess the patients on three fronts. Firstly is the patient fitness, whether or not they have any comorbidity, what is their fitness state in terms of what they are able to achieve physically and whether they can look after themselves, and what is the patient's preference for the treatment options. In terms of the liver disease, there are several parameters that assess the underlying liver reserve, so how much of the liver is damaged and how best the remaining liver can sustain the body's function. This is done by means of composite scoring systems called the child Pugh the child Pew criteria or the MEL score and liver may be graded as good intermediate or poor liver function reserve. And finally and most importantly is assessment of the liver cancer itself by means of scans. In this instance we would want to know what is the number of liver cancer deposits within the liver what's their size and whether these have spread outside of the liver. Once these assessments have taken place, then the correct treatment option can be planned for individual patients. Let us now provide a brief overview of individual treatment options. First and foremost are surgical, and the most important is the liver transplant. This is by far the most, effect the most effective way of treating liver cancer because it treats not only the cancer by removing it, but it also removes usually a diseased organ, and hence there is a substantial benefit to the patient. Transplant units worldwide undertake a very careful assessment of the patient and the suitability of each patient for this treatment modality, and not all patients would be candidates for this treatment. Surgical resection, as the name suggests, the liver tumor, as shown over here, is removed surgically, with a margin of normal liver tissue, and this may provide long-lasting benefit to the patient. Unlike a liver transplant, diseased liver may still generate potential liver tumors in the future. What about ablative treatment? In this instance, specifically microwave ablation seeks to place a needle within the tumor and then heat the tumor to a point which destroys the tumor as well as a rim of liver tissue around it. If this treatment is not suitable then patients may be treated with chemical ablation where typically alcohol is injected into the tumor to destroy it. There is a size limitation. This treatment would not be appropriate for larger tumors. The newer modality of ablative treatment is called IRE and in this treatment several probes are placed around the tumor and then electric current is passed for a fraction of a second thus destroying the tumor but, preserve, but, but preserving collagen such as blood vessels and bile tubes. The IRE is most suitable for tumors which are near blood vessels or bile tubes where other ablative treatments may not be applied. What about transarterial treatment? In this treatment, access is gained to the blood vessel or the artery supplying the tumor as seen in this cartoon drawing. And this blood vessel is then interrupted by injecting small beads laden with chemotherapy molecules to destroy the tumor. As with other treatments, it has limitations in terms of the size of the tumor uh, that can be treated. Lastly, for patients who are not suitable for the above treatment options, chemotherapy and more recently immunotherapy may provide an improvement in survival 
but are not curative. Unfortunately, a significant number of patients may not be suitable for any of the above treatment options and keeping their symptoms at bay as well as improving the quality of life is the most important consideration. This culminates a brief overview of treatment of liver cancer. If you have any comments, please do share.